kāpēc Igaunijā jāceļ nodokļi? Vai Reil Baltika uzbūvēs laikā? Un kādus suvenīrus no pirmajām vizītēm Rīgā mājās atveda topošais Igaunijas prezidents Allars Karis viens pret vienu Tallinā? Uh, Mr. President, thank you for joining us on Latvian TV program One on One. It's my pleasure, thank you. Uh, President, may I start from, uh, from your childhood, actually. Do you remember your first trip, your first uh, visit to Riga, Latvia? I actually remember, remember quite a number of trips, especially from a childhood. And uh, I guess first trips were to the, to the organ concert in Riga. So this is very memory. Take, it took around five or six hours to, to reach from Tartu to, to Riga and during the night the same five, hour, five hours back. So uh, I was a kid and my mother took me along when, the, when she went to if his, uh, her colleagues to, to Riga. So, uh, and this happened quite a number of times. So I still have some uh, LPs from, uh, from that uh, trips. It's, uh, organ music is, uh, is still one of my favorites. Uh, nice. And when we are talking about modern days Latvia, what comes to your mind when you hear the word Latvia? A good neighbor. First of all. First of all, yes, of course. Uh, coming back to the current uh, main issue, global issue, Ukraine, um, how do you think um, so far have we Western countries have done enough uh, to help Ukraine prevail? There is never enough. So, but we have, we have trying to do our best. Of course, some countries are taking slower steps, some, some countries are faster, some countries have more to, uh, to give to Ukraine, some countries have less. So uh, us together, I mean Estonia and Latvia and also Lithuania, we have been definitely on the forefront to, uh, to assist Ukraine as much as possible in militarily, politically, also humanitarian ways. So it's, um, but as I said, it's never enough and Ukraine needs more and more. Uh, do you believe Putin himself uh, will be brought to justice one day? He should. Because we remember from the Second World War, there was no justice afterwards. We, both our countries suffered and uh, there were also deportations and so forth and nobody was actually punished. And these atrocities and uh, me and, and also my colleagues from Baltic states and also Poland, we visited uh, Ukraine and we have seen all these atrocities and crimes against humanity. So uh, there is no way that this is, there is no way out of unpunished. I mean, that means there should be some kind of, you know, accountability for that. And nearest or some further future, we don't know yet. No, this we don't know, unfortunately. Uh, what you said, we must be prepared for a prolonged effort that will be measured in years, talking about uh, conflict in Ukraine. How, how do you see it? Uh, how long it, 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 it could go, it should go? Well, it's extremely difficult to yeah. predict, as you know. And, uh, I, and we see that um, our effort to give some assistance, give some help also to Ukraine, and hopefully we they will uh, find measures and ways to get uh, Russia out of the country. And then eventually, at some point, uh, there is going to be some kind of uh, discussions over the peace. And, uh, but we don't know when it, and it's up to Ukraine, basically, it's not up to us. We can assist and give assistance, but not, uh, it's not up to us. And, uh, and we have to be ready, prepared. And we are already doing to, um, What's going to happen after this, after, after this war? I mean, we are uh, helping Ukraine to build up uh, uh, cities and uh, Estonia particularly is uh, going to open a new, uh, a new kindergarten in, in, in one region in Ukraine and then so forth. So we are already uh, thinking about the end of, uh, of this war. Uh, talking about global security situation after the war, it's again a complicated question, but you said, uh, mentioned before, that we have to start to think about the situation in Estonia. Um, uh, we, we can't be bystander, you said. 
But we, we see already there are some changes uh, as far as uh, uh, security architecture is concerned. Uh, Finland is already a member of NATO and I'm pretty convinced that uh, Sweden is going to be a member as well. Although not much time ago, uh, neither of these countries there were ready to join NATO. So uh, things have changed already and, uh, and that's, that's important. Uh, you mentioned Finland. Uh, how do you think, uh, how important is this for um, future uh, and actually nowadays cooperation in the region in terms of military and systems? I mean, we have been cooperating with Finland also before they, uh, they joined NATO and the same with, uh, with uh, Sweden. I mean, the cooperation is there, and, but now, of course, they are a member of NATO. And it's not a question only to uh, neighboring countries like Estonia and Latvia. It's important for, for Europe in, in general. And, and, and Finland, as you know, has a border with Russia. It's around 1,300 kilometers. And that's quite a long, long border. So as far as the security is concerned, it's very important that Finland is is a member of NATO and they, they are military very equipped, uh, very well equipped uh, country. So they definitely give much, much to, uh, to our alliance. Estonia is going to increase defense spending. And, That's correct. Uh, and uh, how and in which direction you are going to boost your capabilities? to defend your country. So at this very moment uh, we spend around even more than 2% uh, of our budget to, uh, to defence and we are planning to, to increase it, of course. 2.5? Uh, 2.5 or, or even talking, some people are talking about 3%. But the question is not only us, but it's also that the, the rest of the countries in, in the alliance, they also increase their budget and pro hopefully this is going to be discussed also in, in Vilnius in, in, in summer. That uh, every country in, in NATO alliance is going to increase uh, its uh, military budget. I know that, for example, Estonia is going to build uh, quite a large or uh, big training field in Estonia. And local people are not so happy about it. How, do, how to convince them? Yeah, I mean, Latvia is also going to build a, a new training field uh, next to uh, Lithuania's uh, Lithuanian border. But of course, there are people who are living in this, this, in this region and this area. Uh, it's a matter of, you have to explain to these people how important it is to find solutions, new homes, uh, uh, get some money to, to these people. And there are not so many uh, who are actually living in this region, around 12 or 15 houses. But nevertheless, you have to talk to these people because the security issues it's in this very moment and probably in the near future are extremely important. Uh, addressing the issue of national unity, you said Estonian society must be like sewn together as people are divided by many different issues. How the national unity looks to you after the big innovation started last year? I mean, we are much more in uni united as far as this uh, support to Ukraine is concerned, because we have, we have quite a number of refugees from Ukraine and it's around 4 5 percent of our population already. This is a number. And, uh, and we have been very united and also giving uh, uh, any kind of uh, humanitarian assistance to, to Ukraine. But of course, we have always, you know, People get problems, and, and we already have some some discussions about housing, where to to put these uh, people, and finding jobs, and, and and so forth. But as you said, I mean, there are so many topics. People are, are in different positions, but uh, war in Ukraine or supporting Ukraine, that where we are definitely united. The transition to Estonian as a language of instruction will be uh, will will start in preschools and in the first and fourth grade in 2024. To your mind, will it help to sew political nation together? It's a quite a long journey because we have had quite a number of uh, attempts in past. So now there are certain uh, dates put down. But we still need a roadmap, and most importantly, what we need are teachers.
So it's not the only question of teachers in these, uh, these schools that are trying to get uh, Estonian instruction in, but also teachers in, in any school in Estonia. So it's a, it's a difficult task. It's not, uh, it's not uh, easy and it takes, of course, uh, money and money comes from the budget mostly. So, uh, but this government, uh, which started on Monday, uh, they will uh, have this in, in the program and, uh, and hopefully they will succeed. We heard in these times in different countries with a different, um, let's say, um, attitude, um, um, arguments towards uh, Russian culture or um, asking for or, or vowing for embargo or moratorium against the Russian culture or, or actors. What's your feel on that uh, kind of attitude right now? Your thoughts? Well, it's another difficult difficult question how to separate uh, a state and, and culture and sports and so forth. But at this very moment uh, we are in a very uh, strict position that uh, we are not willing to have Russian uh, sportsmen on Olympic Games and, and also our orchestras and, and conductors and so forth, they are not, they are not uh, giving the concerts in Russia and then vice versa. So, but of course, I mean, we, we don't burn books because uh, Russia, Russian culture is quite deep and going back to for centuries. So, uh, and, but at this very moment it is because in, in, in people's people hearts, this, this war has, you know, made some, some scars and it takes quite a while to, to uh, mend them. You appointed the new Estonian government uh, recently to office and uh, one of the fir first uh, goals uh, they mentioned is to, uh, to, they hope to send the marriage equality bill to the RICO before the summer holidays uh, as Estonia becomes the first European country in this region to do so. But um, uh, the Archbishop of Estonian Lutheran Church said recently that coalition acts like a thief pushing through marriage equality and I do not see any readiness or willingness to do this in the churches. I mean to register weddings and what is your say on this debate or in this debate? This debate is important and of course uh, we are also split in, in this country. Some people say we need, we need more time to dis for discussions and there are also politicians who say we should do it uh, right away. So uh, I think they both are right. And, but discussions are needed so you can't really uh, um, use your political will and, and, uh, and finish this issue as, as soon as possible. So uh, I guess we still need some discussions, for, for sure. Although it doesn't concern so many people if you uh, look, look at this issue uh, in, in general. Uh, do you have some, any particular stance on that issue? Uh, my understanding is that means this issue shouldn't separate more as we are already. Quite diplomatic. I would like to ask. One has to be diplomatic <laughs> at some point as well. Yes, and, and you, are, you are a president with a scientific background. And how it feels to you to, to be in politics? You, you have to base your arguments on the facts. And some, sometimes you hear arguments based on, I don't know. That's my problem. Out of blue. So yes, I'm, I, I'm, uh, my background is, is uh, natural sciences, not only sciences, but natural sciences. That means uh, evidence is uh, very important and I, I do hope whatever I say, it's, it's evidence-based. And, uh, and if I don't have this kind of evidence or facts, so, so I have to uh, dig further before I, I say, uh, say anything. But I understand in politics it's, uh, it's quite difficult. So uh, sometimes you have to uh, say your opinion without uh, any real uh, research behind that. But we still, and I also ask my, our government to do the same, just, just cover facts first before you, you start uh, doing anything. Because it's, um, otherwise it's, 
it's extremely difficult and you have to explain. You have to explain why did you use this kind of alternative rather than another one. For instance? For rising taxes. And, and, and so it's forth. a current issue here. Yeah, it's a time. current issue here because we, we need resources and there are quite a number of taxes current government is planning to rise. So uh, uh, also taxes for cars and, and those so forth or rising taxes for, for hotels. And uh, because at this very moment it's 9% but it's going to be 22%. So it's, it's a huge difference and you have to have analysis, analysis behind, uh, behind before you start uh, uh, pushing this uh, law. So you don't see good analysts uh, so far? So they, started from them. they started on Monday and they had ideas, but, but not much analysts behind it. Okay, I see. The new, new government, um, there is a new name, a Minister of Climate, uh, that replaces the former Minister of Environment position. Does it just mean renaming the Ministry or something else? The government has changed, the current government has changed quite a number of ministers and, and uh, what they do. So it's not only the name of the uh, Minister of Climate. I mean, in the very beginning, this name of the minister was quite much, much longer. It consisted, I, I guess, three words even. But uh, yes, now there is a climate, Minister of Climate and, uh, and during a visit to, to, uh, to Latvia, I hope uh, he's uh, going to come along and we can discuss with Latvian colleagues uh, issues because there are quite a number of them. In Latvia we often have discussions on a political level in such a context. We can agree on green agenda until it doesn't contradict our economic interests or some other interests. So this is about, I don't know, usage of peat or wood and manufacturing of these goods or, or building the windmills or wind generators uh, very close to some villages or some other places. What kind? Do you have any messages um, in such kind of situations in Estonia? We are not the first one to, uh, to build uh, windmills. And we have experience from different countries, starting from Denmark or, or Holland. So there are ways out. You have to... Um, uh, also get these people, people on, on boat, a boat who, uh, mm, on whose back, uh, backyard these windmills are going to build. So uh, it's not that difficult and we are planning to, uh, to have a joint uh, wind park uh, together with Latvia. So, uh, so that means it's our joint issue to, to solve. But people are getting good use if they, if they know that uh, it's important to get uh, a green energy and even especially when it's even uh, even cheaper and uh, wind is where solar is where and biomass is there because in Estonia main source is still uh, oil shale and there is a political will to get rid of uh, oil shale and replace it with different kinds of uh, of energy resources including uh, including wind and what if people in Hume are saying, I don't like these windmills that I can see from my window offshore? What can you say to them? You have to explain why it's important. What's the alternative? I mean, uh, alternative that uh, you are in dark during, uh, during winter time. So uh, you have to explain. And it's not, uh, as I said, we are not the first ones who are going to build this kind of thing. So, uh, but uh, it's, it's very humane, that means you, you don't want anything to, uh, to disturb you, you are used to. During your stay in Latvia, uh, you are going to visit Gast or Jinchukalms. Um, is cooperation, um, to your mind, sufficient for our countries to achieve a higher level of energy independence in this region? Diversity is important, and yes, we... we uh, uh, we, we have our, our gas stored in, in, in Latvia and, and we also built a new LNG uh, terminal here in Estonia in parallel with, uh, with Finland. Yes. Of course it's a separate story because there is no vessel at the moment uh, to give uh, LNG but, uh, but still it's there, the possibility is there. If you need it, it's, it's ready to, to be used. So that means diversity is important and uh, especially to have uh, new technologies and to develop new technologies and to get uh, uh, new te technologies also into our country and that we are going to use it. The idea of a nuclear power plant in Estonia, does it seem realistic to you? 
We only started these discussions and, and second, we have also a survey where we could build these kind of uh, nuclear plants. Our total number was 15 or 16 different places in Estonia. But as I said, we only started discussion, but we have neighbour like Finland and they have a nuclear plant and there are other countries uh, which develop, including France and, and, and so forth, who do develop nuclear plants. Some and countries shut down uh, nuclear like plants. Like Germany, yes, Germany. I, I agree, I agree. So, but, but they buy electricity from France, so it's, uh, it's kind of another story. I mean, you, you can close down your, your nuclear plants, but you still use uh, the same source, but from a different country. So, uh, but I mean, this, uh, this uh, also develops. It's not that it, it's like it's today, but the most importantly, what to do with the nuclear waste. And uh, I have to solve this problem first. About our common project, Rail, Rail Baltica, uh, are you satisfied with uh, how this project is being managed in Estonia so far? Is it going to be uh, according to the schedule? And I know that you know the answer. I mean, <laughs> the answer is no, yeah. because we started with this idea in 1994 that we, we should have a speed uh, rail between uh, Europe and, and Baltic states and so forth. We are actually, uh, you know, next year we have an anniversary of not having this uh, speed train yet. But uh, nevertheless, I mean, we had, at least we have decided to build a uh, rail Baltic. Uh, there have been different speeds, but we all know all these huge infrastructures, they, it takes longer and it takes much more money than it was expected in the very beginning. And this happened also with Israel Baltica. So uh, I'm going to visit uh, Latvia and I'm going to on spot and to see what uh, what's happens in, in Riga. And of course, I know what, what's happening in Estonia. It probably takes much, much longer than expected. Now I think the deadline is 2030 something, mm. uh, but in the very beginning it was 2025 or so, so it has been prolonged already 10 years. Uh, but we need this. We need these connections uh, between uh, north and south and between uh, east and west. And what we also need, it's not only a speed uh, train from, from Tallinn to Berlin, but we also need a train from, from Tartu to Riga. For uh, I'm from Tartu and I find it very important to get uh, as quick as possible from Tartu to Riga because you've got a um, bigger airport than in Tallinn and, and so forth. I mean, if we want to um, be connected, we need also uh, these kind of smaller ones, smaller, smaller railroads instead of you have to stop in Valka and, and wait uh, another train uh, for hours. Right. To visit Latvia, you are going to use Air Baltic? Uh, I guess so, yes. I yeah. haven't checked, but it's I guess a, so. It's because we don't have ours. <laughs> it's pity? In a way, yes, but... Uh, it's expensive. It is expensive, I know, but I guess rail, I mean, our politics has managed quite quite well. So uh, we, we, are, we are happy that we have this kind of connection. I visited Holland also with our Baltic, not, mm -hmm. uh, not KLM. Okay, right. Right. Uh, another issue um, I would like to, 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 to raise uh, in this uh, interview, this is about education and Estonian schools. And it seems that Estonian schools um, offering the best education in Europe, according to PISA results, at least according to PISA results. Why so? You know how to learn? Not only in Europe, in the world, according to PISA results. But of course, it's only PISA, so we are at least in top three, and that's for sure. And if you look at how different countries are actually on, on, on top, let's say, five, different, different educational systems. So that means PISA is not the only, only um, measure that gives you the, the idea or indication uh, how good the education is. But Estonians, I probably guess Latvians as well, they are very, want to have want to become well educated and then university education is extremely important because we have problems, not, not so many young people want to go to vocational training and, and so forth, they want to go to universities and, and the best ones. And in past we have divided in a way that we got University of Tartu, 
you got uh, Polytechnical Institute, but when people traveled, who want to uh, study engineering, or went to Riga and, uh, and vice versa. Uh, talking about, uh, um, uh, let's say, the first level, uh, could, you, could you offer a good quality of education in small rural schools and countryside? Is it possible to somehow to balance these things? At the moment, yes, but there is a threat that we are not able to do so in coming years because the classes are getting smaller and smaller, there are not enough teachers, not enough resources, uh, as far as municipalities are concerned. So there is another discussion, but we can't, uh, can't have only two cities in Estonia, that means Tallinn and Tartu. That means we have to develop also region regions together with, uh, with schools, school system, uh, libraries and so forth. It's a difficult task, and, but there should be a solution. And uh, of course another topic is also connections, how to connect uh, between small, um, uh, small villages and, and big cities, how to find work, how to... It's not only schools, but you also have other trainings. You have to go to, to sports and you some uh, young people want to uh, play violin, and uh, if it's not there, you have to travel anyway. It's uh, it's another difficult topic. Uh, this current government is uh, planning to to solve. Let's see how. It yes, goes. exactly. Let's see. Um, what else you said um, regarding um, presidential elections? We know in Latvia we have a presidential elections uh, quite soon, but you were calling for a debate on how to select and elect a president in modern day Estonia. You said um, that public disappointment after last two procedures uh, took place. Um, what's your point? Do you have any proposal to your new system? Or just leave it how it is. Uh, after I was elected as president, I discussed with uh, different, uh, actually all parties in the parliament. What should we do? How to improve? Uh, we didn't find consensus, and it was a bit more than one year ago. But now the new government, uh, new parliament, actually, they have agreed that they, we should find a solution uh, for the presidential election. So they want to extend the time you actually propose a presidential candidate. There is also that if it's not elected in parliament, that um, the election, electoral body uh, should be bigger, bigger in, in including more municipalities and so forth. So there are ideas, but not, uh, not solutions yet. And of course, there are, there are people who uh, want to have a direct election. So uh, opinions uh, vary. Do you want direct elections? Well, if you, are, if you have a direct elections, we'll probably also change say, our constitution than to give a bit more power to, uh, to a president. But uh, there's only one or two parties who discuss this direct election. So, but there are countries nearby who have this direct election, so without a problem. So I, I don't have actually my personal opinion uh, which, uh, which, uh, which, is, which is better, but this, always these discussions before um, president elections, we should maybe find a solution and uh, that everybody is not happy, but at least they, they, uh, they feel that they, their opinion has, has been there. Right. Talking about presidents and, and, and your Latvian colleague, um, on social networks, uh, I don't know, have you noticed memes and jokes about the likeness of Latvian and Estonian presidents? I was told, yes. Uh, I, I even uh, also had a look at a photo, we are both together. I didn't find that much uh, similarities. similarities. Between them. Well, we got beard, yes, of course, and maybe not that much much uh, here, I have less, of course, but, uh, but it's up to, um, yeah, it's up to people. Uh, but how important is a sense of humor to the presidency? I guess it's extremely important, otherwise you can't, uh, you can't hold this position. Well, you can, but, uh, but still, you need. Sometimes it helps a lot. It will be your first state visit during your presidency to Latvia. That's correct. Three days. That's too long. Yes. Uh, what's the main, the main issues you want to raise in, in a neighboring country? 
Oh, well, I think the main issue still we, we discussed is, is connections between, uh, between our two countries and what we can do together, I mentioned with Wind Park and, and uh, well, uh, well, some other issues. And I was invited by your president, so I, I guess he has an agenda, so uh, he knows better what we are going to discuss. Oh, okay, no, I know you are going to meet students in Riga who are studying Estonian language. Uh, how do you think, could it be more popular uh, to both nations to learn each other's languages? In one of my interviews, I, uh, after I got this position, I, I said we need to know uh, our languages of our neighbours. Finnish language and uh, Latvian language. Of course, Finnish language for Estonians, uh, Estonians is easier, but nevertheless, I, I guess we should know each other languages, although they are small, but still. It, uh, why? Uh, because we are neighbours, that, that's why. But of course, uh, to be honest, we are living in a time where we can prob probably in coming years have already a chip in your head and uh, you speak Latvian, I speak Estonian, and, and we, we, can, each other. we can understand each other because this, this field of technology develops that fast, so uh, it's even difficult to follow. And so uh, maybe we don't need to, to learn each other languages, but these machines will do the job. Uh, when you, again, when you did a speech um, uh, during uh, February 21st, you mentioned uh, your writer, Estonian writer August Kaili, it sounds very familiar to Latvian, uh, Latvian air, air, I mean it's uh, partly of Latvian origin. Um, what kind of message you, you wanted to, to, to deliver by his uh, character? Well, the character is, well, we can bring a number of examples, not only August Kaili and his, uh, his stories, but uh, there are so many common history as far as literature is concerned and culture is concerned so and brings up our uh, similarities as far as uh, jokes we do uh, amongst each other. We have plenty of jokes uh, about Latvians, so it's probably vice, vice versa. So uh, we have so many connections from the past and hopefully it will, uh, it will continue also in, in future. I hope so. Uh, when you took your office, you said, I wish Estonia wisdom. How to achieve that goal? Step by step. I think the most important is to have a, a good education and access to education. You mentioned the small school, uh, schools. If you don't have access to education from a very, very uh, young age, we, uh, we are in, a, in a trouble or we, we, we got a problem. So that means you have to have an access, and not only to, to formal education, but also informal education, because uh, kids, they need to develop in different ways. And one issue I brought up also is, uh, is mental health, which is uh, not a problem in, uh, in Estonia, but it's a problem everywhere. I mean, uh, especially with young people. Mr. President, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you very much for, for the questions.